for the second time in eight days, South Carolina and Clemson get together for the interstate rivalry, this time on the hardwood court, as the Clemson Tigers come to the Colonial Life Center and defeat the Gamecocks by the score of 64-55. Clemson going off an inverse week this week in which Milton Jennings, their leading scorer, was arrested on marijuana charges. Had adversity to face, but bounced back this week with an outstanding defensive performance today and were able to limit the Gamecocks to a poor shooting output and also force 19 turnovers and pulling away to the nine-point victory. We're going to go now and hear from both head coaches and get their take on today's ball game. First, we're going to start with Coach Brad Brunell. Then we're going to hear from a couple of Gamecock players, and then Frank Martin is going to give his spin on what took part in today's ball game. Uh, had some adversity uh, this week and uh, showed a lot of toughness and grit. Finding a way to win, uh, but we had a very good stretch in the first half. Played really well, and then uh, South Carolina made a nice run at half. And then. Uh, we gathered ourselves and played really well in the second half. Made big free throws down the stretch, got good stops, and uh, won, a, won an important game. So it was good for us. Questions? Questions? You put a feed lob. Can you big man move into the basket in the second half? I'm sorry. Could you repeat? It seemed like you made a lot of uh, points on big man move towards the basket yeah. in the second half. Yeah, we did a better job of, uh, of getting the ball inside to Devin. Um, Tried to talk about that a little bit more at halftime. I thought we were a little perimeter oriented. You know, the way that South Carolina plays, they can speed you up. Uh, it's hard to make passes, so it's, it can be difficult to run traditional offense sometimes. And uh, I thought we got out of sorts every once in a while, certainly in that middle part of the first half when we were playing well, and then all of a sudden we started turning the ball over every other possession. Um, so we tried to settle down a little bit and get the ball inside. I thought that was helpful. Coach Rod's done a really good job of running the show for you this year. Made some big free throws down the stretch tonight. Can you talk about his play? Yeah, you know, just a uh, very tough-minded kid. Uh, you know, wasn't heavily recruited at all. Uh, but a guy who's, you know, he's, he, he likes to make winning plays. He's a tough player. He, he's not afraid to put his shoulder down and go drive it to the basket. Play through contact. Um, you know, he's not a great shooter. But he's one of those guys that can make opportunistic free throws. Obviously, there was a time last year when he made a uh, three-point play and made a free throw with no time left to send the game to overtime. And, uh, you know, he's just a guy that we trust. Um, you know, he's got a little bit of that football mentality. He's a fo high school football player, a very good one. And, uh, you know, his will to win was big tonight. Can you talk about the job your team did attacking the basket? You were able to get easy baskets, plus you went the line 37 times. Well, as I mentioned, the way they play, they, they make it hard to make passes. Uh, and so there are times you've got to put your head down and make plays. I think they're trying to force you to make individual plays as opposed to being able to, to run some stuff. It takes the game a little bit more. You know, it can take it out of the head coach's game a little bit because you're not uh, able to run as many things, call as many things. Um, I thought we did better in the second half with it, but you know the, the plan then is to, to attack if you can. And sometimes you're going to have some ugly looking turnovers. We had a few of those, but I think you've got to you got to be aggressive. And uh, you know there were times we obviously played you know two point guards out there a lot with Rod Hall and Donis Filer because of the pressure. Do you talk about your defense and if, is that as well as your defense has played this year over the years? Uh, we, we've had pretty good defensive teams, um, you know, wherever I've coached. You know, it's a little, we don't coach it exactly the same way Frank does, but both of us uh, have had good defenses. And uh, this was a good performance. We obviously played very well against Gonzaga defensively. Uh, we weren't able to win the game, but, um, you know, we did a good job. We, we held their field goals down. We wanted to limit their threes, but we did a good job of that. Uh, they're an outstanding offensive rebound team. We were, we were okay at that for a while. They, they got a bunch of offensive rebounds, but they missed a lot of shots. It's, um, you know, a very tough-minded team. Um, you know, they didn't really get into the flow of their, some of their stuff as well. They didn't get a lot of interior offense. So I thought our guys followed a pretty good game plan and executed. Can you comment about your interior defense, particularly down the, in, interior defense, particularly down the stretch? I like you took a lot of what they were trying to do down the stretch. Well, uh, you know, they're, they're better on the perimeter right now than they are in the post. They obviously lost some 
post players. And uh, some of the guys I have are young. I really like Carrera. He's a, he's a tough kid. Um, he's going to be a very good player. Uh, but I thought we did do some things. We obviously have Devin Booker, who's a senior, so that helped. We had an older player in there who played with very good poise, I thought. And, uh, you know, pretty good defensively in terms of protecting our basket, blocking some shots, just altering some. We could have taken a few more charges uh, at times, but I thought for the most part we did a good job of, you know, making them shoot some tough twos. Uh, Brad, you talk about uh, winning this game without Milton, and then also Devin didn't have the best of games, and yet you were still finally able to get a double-digit win on the road. Well, just, you know, I don't ever talk about guys you have or don't have if they're not here. You, you know, every guy's on scholarship, so we need to figure out ways to be, be competitive with the guys we have. And, uh, you know, we had more time from, from the Purdue game. We obviously had about an hour shoot-around. You're not, not going to do too much in an hour shoot around to change or develop a plan. Um, I don't know that our plan was a lot better after two or three days, uh, but at least we did have a couple days and had some guys get some reps. We actually played bigger at times. We played Josh and Devin Booker together in the second half. Um, and so I thought that helped us uh, having a couple days to at least go through some things where Josh got to play with Devin some. We really haven't done that. We almost played two point guards at times and two centers at times. Uh, in this game, but uh, those extra days certainly helped our team in preparation for this game. Coach, you mentioned the uh, production you got out of some of the freshmen, Adonis, Jordan, and Josh. You know, how good is it to see that out of those guys? Well, it's, you know, when you only have well, two seniors, one of them's not here, and the other guys are sophomores, those freshmen need to play. You know, we, don't have, we don't have a lot of other guys. so. They better do it more than just today. They better do it consistently for us to win games this year. We, uh, you know, they're all going to have to play. And um, you know, I thought Jordan did a good job. Sometimes you come back home and it's hard to play. You're kind of unnerved. I thought he was he was pretty locked in. It gave us a good 16 minutes. Had a great steal and a dunk. Hit a nice three. Uh, Adonis, you know, was an aggressive guy. And he was aggressive at driving the ball and creating plays. And that's that's what he does. And that's why we needed him today. So, and it was just good for Josh to play extended minutes. He didn't really get many touches, didn't get chances to score, but we just needed him to defend, rebound, and use his big body, and I thought that's what he did. Following up on some of the younger guys that played today, just with the atmosphere the way it was, how important was it for them to get these minutes and to kind of get a feel for what you know, big-time basketball yeah. is on? It was good. I mean, it was uh, there was a good atmosphere in there, especially when they made their run. That was uh, It was starting to get loud. and. Uh, you know, we had to try to sell ourselves. And, uh, you know, you need to put your guys in these kinds of games, playing Purdue like we did last, uh, earlier in the week, play South Carolina, then we play Arizona at home on Saturday. Um, those kinds of games are what we're trying to schedule some for, uh, for ACC play, obviously Gonzaga and the Old Spice Tournament. So we're trying to put our guys in some difficult spots to get them experience to be able to handle this when the ACC play comes. Any other questions for Coach? Okay, Thank I'll you. need for uh, players. Just how difficult was it to try to play them close when the whistles kept blowing? Um, you know it's difficult because we got a lot of fouls going on, so you just got to you know, do a better job of sitting down playing defense, not reaching it, just execute on the defensive side. But of course it's going to be frustrating when the whistle's not blowing your way, but we just got to you know, put that aside and just play defense. Bruce, uh, what's the adjustment kind of been like here, two games back into basketball mode? And where do you feel like there are some areas that might still be a little rusty? And, and where do you feel like you're maybe farther along than you expect? Um, it, it's coming well, you know. I'm still learning the plays and, and getting the plays down. But um, I got to get a little bit in better in shape. You know, football and basketball is two different shapes, so I got to get better in shape. And I just got to, you know, just go out there and just play hard and just, you know, come together as a team play well. Britton, could you just talk about uh, I guess, what happened against St. John's and how scary was that for you and then being able to shake it off and come out and score 16 today? Um, yeah, the injury, uh, St. John's, yeah, it was 
it was I was pretty nervous when it happened or whatever and I just know uh when they released me from the hospital they said I was good to go and I felt like I was good to go after practicing yesterday. So I felt good until the injury wasn't a factor at all. It seems their defense took you guys out of a took like down the stretch. I mean push you guys in tough shots. I mean that the Clemson defense uh, forced you guys in the tough shot to pick them right down the stretch, second half. Um, they, they, was playing, they were playing great defense. We just got to execute our offense and not you know, let them take us out of our offense and just execute and do what we got to do, basically. Can you guys talk about the start of the second half? Y'all came out and took the lead, got a lot of momentum with the crowd, and it seemed like Clemson either made an adjustment or something happened there. They went on a run and was able to really get the momentum back. Um, yeah, like you said, we came out, you know, we took the lead, but, you know, they made a run, and uh, I guess we, we didn't we, did, we didn't respond back. We respond back a little bit, but, they, you know, they kept the momentum on their side, and they were able to win the game. Did you guys talk about not being able to execute the offense? Are you guys having trouble communicating on that side of the floor? Or are you guys not spacing correctly? I mean, what seems to be the big issue in your mind? We just got to, you know, just get open, just cut and get open and not, and not be scared and just, you know, just get the ball and make plays, basically. Yeah, I think uh, it's a little bit lack of communication coming out of timeouts and listening to what the coach has been telling us. And we got to find a way to communicate better between each other. I think that's it. Well, you guys kind of addressed this, obviously. When you, you don't have a big margin for error offensively, I mean, how difficult does it make it when you turn the ball over 19 times in a game that was probably going to be scrappy just considering the, the way it played out last year? but. 19 turnovers in the game with limited possessions and how difficult does that make it? Anytime you turn the ball over 19, 20 times, you're going to lose the game. It's going to be very hard for you. you know, they'll get transition runs and they're going to score off your turnovers, so it's going to be hard to win. And, and that's what they did to us today. Bruce, you're coming off a week of, after a very emotional rivalry game in football and now you play the basketball. How difficult was it to lose a Clemson today? Um, of course, I, you know, I always wanted to beat them, but, you know, you, you can't win them all. And I'm just, you know, I'm a little frustrated and mad, but, you know, I just got to worry about next week when we play next week. I just got to forget about it, just go into practice and get the guys up and just, you know, play for next week. You guys get 41 points from the bench. What is that telling you in the end? The bench is going 41 points. What's that telling you? I guess we got a good bench. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? All right, thank you. Rather than team concepts, and you play good teams, you show you shoot a low percentage and you turn it over. That's that's the unfortunate trap that we continue to fall into. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, but it it uh, you know it's one of those things. Then you, you there's there's a lot of behaviors that have to be changed, and you don't change those like turning lights on and off. That's uh, you change those through experiences and teaching, and learning and education, and, and, uh, and finding a personality personality of your team. And, uh, that's what we continue to search for. I think I saw a little bit today, uh, but we need to find it more. Frank, all the fouls in the first half, how much did that take away from what you guys wanted to do defensively? Did you have to kind of back off of them because of the whistles? I. I think referees call fouls. It's a foul. I mean, that's uh, we we that we commit a lot of fouls. Here, here's here, here's the deal. The first 10 minutes of the half, 10 12 minutes of the half, we committed fouls because we were hesitant. We play on our heels. We play with no toughness. You know. Um, then the last seven, eight minutes of the half, we didn't foul very often. I actually walked in the locker room at halftime, and that's as happy as I've been in a long time because I finally finally saw guys on the court playing with the discipline, the tenacity, the lessons that we try to teach. I think it's no surprise we were in the game. 
but you know we, we don't understand how to do that at a high level over an extended period of time yet. And, uh, and when I talk about our team's personality, that's what I'm talking about. Whoever you are, you need to be that all the time. You can't be that every once in a while just when, the, just when things are good. You gotta be that even when things are hard. And, and right now, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, Frank, what all factors were at play there in the second half after you guys got the lead there? You got a 31-28 and then Clemson kind of reasserted itself. Bad offense. Just bad offense. I mean, we, 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 we couldn't couldn't make a pass from the point to the wing. Whenever we did pass, guys wouldn't move. They'd stand and look. Uh, give them credit now. They, they guard you. I mean, give them credit. They guard you. They, uh, uh, they, they you know, Brad, Brad and I, we, we have spent time uh, away uh, from the competitive place of basketball and just share opinions about how to coach and play the game. And defense is number one on their minds every day. And, uh, uh, and it's obvious when you watch them on film and you actually line up and play against them that their personality is there all the time. Uh, you know, but, but offensively, we were just inept early in the second half. And, you know, like I said, bad offense leads not just to miss shots and turnovers, but to breakaway baskets. And, you know, we, we kind of got in that hole and then we battled to get out of the hole. And, and then we, you know, just we got to get a stop and we can't get it.